Welcome to the Lynn Community Television Show, a show which focuses on organizations working to make their impacts right here in the city of Lynn. Here with me today from the Historical Commission, we have the Chairman, Carl Greenler, and the Secretary, Pat Lee, here today to talk about the Commission, its function, and how it serves the city of Lynn. We're going to talk about the Commission in detail, but first and foremost, I'd love to give our guests an opportunity to explain who they are and how they're involved with the Commission. Carl, let's start with you. I'm the Chairman of the Historical Commission. I've been involved in this since the mid-1980s. Uh, I got involved with my aunt, who actually had been involved since the 1970s when the historical commissions were created. So you were a legacy before you even got in there? Pretty much, All yes. Right. I'm very much interested in history. It's always been a passion of mine, and that's what drove me to get in. All right. Yeah. Pat, you've been there since 88, mm -hmm. so you and Carl have worked together for a long time. A long, long time. Yeah. As the secretary, you're involved today, so mm -hmm. tell us what that means. Uh, I send the agenda ahead of time. Carl gives me the agenda. I send it to uh, have it posted because the outside community needs to know in case they want to come to know what we're going to be doing. And then I do the minutes during the meeting and I have uh, volumes of minutes because I've been the secretary for an awful long yeah, time. Yeah, I was just going to say, you probably have like a huge, I do. one of those like notebook yeah, things. Yeah, it's like, like humongous. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of administrative tasks, but a lot of uh, hands-on type stuff too. Uh, so if you're just joining us, we're talking about the Historical Commission. You can reach out to these guys, 781-690-1307. They meet on the first Tuesday of every month, 6.30 p.m. in room 402 if everything goes to plan. But you can also go to the City of Lynn website to find additional information. You can also reach out to these guys via their phone number. It's also listed at the bottom of the screen. Um, so, Carl, we're going to talk a little bit about the commission, um, some of its collaborations, uh, some of its most recent successes. We're going to talk about some uh, examples of past work. But first and foremost, I'd love to be able to just talk about the commission, its overall mission, why it exists, how, what, what purpose it serves. The commission exists as a technically as a division of the Massachusetts Historical Commission which itself derives from the National Park Service. Uh, it's all about preservation of properties uh, to preserve history. That's something we have not done very well in the United States and we've discovered that uh, back in the late 60s we were just tearing down anything because it was old and we were losing a lot of our heritage so the National Park Service was created and generated standards, designated a state organization uh, to run each state, and then each state authorizes the municipality to uh, generate a local historical commission to uh, control things at the local level. Uh, we will go around and find various properties and find ways to preserve them and to promote history of the municipality. Yeah, some of some examples of these buildings, you've got the, uh, the GAR, uh, Grand Army of the Pro Republic, uh, I think uh, St. Stephen's Church is one yes. of them. Um, there's a ton of them. Um, one of our associates here, Dave Riley, used to do a show called Historic Lynn. He used to work hand-in-hand -hand with you guys. I believe it still exists on the interweb somewhere, so if you're out there, you can actually check it out. It was a really well-done program, um, and it focused all around the National Historic Registered Buildings. Um, what are you guys' your top two favorite, Carl? Favorite buildings in Lynn? Oh gosh, I think the GAI would have to be one of them. Definitely. Um, I'm not sure, what, there's, there's just so many. Yeah. Um, we tried to save the uh, Waterworks building uh, the pumping station that would have been that would have been gorgeous yeah we're gonna talk about that yeah. a little bit more in detail yeah. um, we're gonna talk about you know where how, how it started you know where it set up and then how it ended up yeah. following through um, or rather the lack thereof uh, Pat some of your favorite buildings in Lynn uh, I'm gonna have to definitely go with the GAR that's yeah. one of my all-time favorites and it's and very deceiving from the outside it know? is like and if anybody has never gone in there call ahead of time and uh, get yourself a tour there. You have to make an appointment and um, I think you'll enjoy it, especially the members room, the right. Civil War uh, soldiers when they came back. They used to meet there all the time, the, the Union. And uh, it's pretty much preserved the way it was. And uh, everybody goes in and it's, they go, oh my 
God. Mm. They, they just can't believe what it looks like. It is. It, it truly is awesome. It is. Like that it word, is. like it really is. It's the mm -hmm. best word to use for it. And you go in there and you're like, awesome. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to talk about the, uh, the so the Grand, Honor, Grand, Grand Army of the Republic, one of how many national registered historic buildings in Lynn? Oh, almost 100. 100 of them. Okay. So there's a lot. Yes. So behind us, we've got some examples of some of my favorite buildings that I just were actually never able to be, be go and see. So oh we got the Capitol Theater, the Olympia, the, uh, the Mark Comique, and then the Warner. And these are buildings and these are examples of buildings that were torn down in the 60s just simply because they were old. Mm -hmm. and they just weren't able to be able to be kept up, um, nor did anybody really have any type of interest in doing it. Um, I want to talk about history preservation and, and when it really became um, an important part of what you guys are doing in the city. So preservation, big part of it. But when, when did you guys start really getting at this thing in Lynn? Uh, probably by the late 80s, early 90s. We were really uh, cranked up. We got reorganized. Um, Al DiVigilio reorganized the uh, Historical Commission. It had been fallow since uh, 1976 for budgetary reasons. But uh, Al reconstituted it and got us going. We don't have a budget officially, but we still kept going. Um, and we were able to use uh, Lynn Community Development for matching grants. Uh, the Massachusetts Historical Commission has a pot of money, and they use the uh, Massachusetts Preservation Project funds which is a 50-50 matching grants for municipalities. So if we can identify a project, we can talk to community development. If they like it, they will write the grant, submit it to Mass Historical, and use the community development block grant funds for the 50% match with Mass Historical. And we've been able to do quite a few of those. So, uh, so you guys are able to actually accomplish so much. Yeah, that's how much of the uh, GAR has been preserved. Uh, Lynn Historic, the uh, auditorium at, here at City Hall, uh, the statue in front of City Hall was also done with a matching grant. So, yeah, a lot of stuff. So, when it comes to preservation, uh, are there any, is there other like categories of preservation? Is there a difference between like a national historic registered building and a local historic registered building? Yes, there is. And as well, it's, it's not the building, it's the district. Uh, the stage one is the National Historic District, of which we have quite a few. Because the Diamond District is the, I believe, it's the third largest in the state of Massachusetts. That's just an honorific. You know, we're a National Historic District, and we get a couple of plaques, and that's about it. A local historic district is a little more difficult to achieve, because the members of that neighborhood have to request it from City Hall, and City Hall would have to request it from the state legislature, and the state legislature would have to vote on it. At that point, the local historic, the people would be allowed to create the district and they would vote upon the actual rules and regulations under which they rely. Everybody, of course, likes to point to Old Town and Marblehead. That is an example of a very extreme local historic district. Uh, they come in pretty much whatever you want, right. wild to wild, as I say. And of course, Old Town is probably on the wild side. But if you just want to do colors, generally speaking, and not get into the uh, how tall you can paint your, and what color you can paint your picket fence, you can do that as well. And we're trying to get one or two of those done here in the city of Lynn, because there's an extra 10% of the Massachusetts Preservation Project Funds grants is available only to local historic districts, or they call them certified local districts. Uh, and you have to be, you have to have at least one local historic district to qualify for that extra 10% of, of monies. And we're luckily, uh, we, we're there today with the Diamond District? No, the we're Diamond District there. is just a national district. It is not a local district. Are there, are, there any, are there any districts that you're trying to do? We're trying to do the uh, GAR. You can do a one building district. Okay. And the GAR Board of Trustees is willing to uh, become a certified uh, local district. So we're trying at this time to uh, work that through City Hall. So what I'm hearing is that you, you need participation from everybody, really, at the citizen level to the uh, to local government, all the way to state legislature. Yes. Uh, so collaboration is a big part. Pat, can you speak to some of the collaborations that are a big part of you guys' success um, here in Lynn? Well, I think as Kyle said, 
community development probably tops the list. Yeah. Um, but what we've been trying to do with the GAR is uh, get the city council, or actually get the planning board um, to meet and talk about this. And that hasn't happened yet as far as I know. Uh, this has been an ongoing thing for what, about three months. Yeah, three or four. And I don't know where it's going to go from here because, I mean, it's a worthwhile project. I don't know why they're dragging their feet on it yeah. because, I mean, it's, it's only a win-win situation. Right. But, you know, it, it would be them on that. Um, sometimes uh, a mass historic, one thing that I can think of is back, must be three or four years ago now, we got a message from them that they had done an aerial study. They have this, uh, it's called the Macris, which has all of the uh, state historic properties on it. And um, there's several, many, many in Lynn. And they did an aerial study and they were wondering, we can't find this, we can't find this. So we got a list of things. So we set out and each one of us took a few of them and went and did an investigation and then we found out what happened to them. Some of them aren't there anymore. Some of them are, but they look so different they couldn't tell, you know, what they were. And we went up to Mass Historic, which is up uh, right near where the JFK building is. It's in the um, State Archives building. And we sat down with them and presented our findings to them. So that, that was kind of an interesting thing yeah. that we did. That's got to give you some sense of pride, too. I mean, like, because doing your homework, like just even after doing this show, like, I mean, maybe spend about an hour to a half hour researching the commission, but afterwards I'm like, I feel like I know a lot about these guys now and I'm a, somewhat of a spokesperson for them, but it's really not the case. You guys are talking about uh, example work where it's like you've put hours of research into something and you're really trying to make it, uh, make it, a, make it, make it known to everybody that why this building should be in the National Historic Registered uh, list. Um, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about some of your recent news. Uh, we've got a lot of detail on the commission, history preservation a big part of it. Uh, Lynn was incorporated in 1629. It doesn't mean that it was founded then. Yeah. We're, among, we're among some of the, uh, the first settlements in the whole entire nation of America, so mm -hmm. there's been a lot that's gone on here. Um, some of the uh, recent news, we discussed a little bit the Diamond District, where that stands right now. I'd like to talk a little about, about the cemeteries and then the Walnut Street pump station, how that process worked. But most recently, you guys just celebrated your significance awards. Yes. What are these awards? Who won them? And what is it all about, Carl? Uh, the Significance Awards we give out annually um, to various categories. We have a residential, commercial, an open space, and a devotion award. And we're trying to promote the city, obviously, in, in terms of its history. So we'll pick someone each year in the residential category who has kept their building up very nicely, you know, historically, and ditto for the uh, commercial category. Um, in the open space, it's, it's more fluid. Uh, this year, obviously, we gave to the uh, city of Lynn for the uh, Frederick Douglass bandstand. They, they restored that bandstand. And it looks beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah, especially the benches there. You know, we should definitely see some events this summer, right? Yeah, yep, yep. So things of that nature. And then the Devotion Award is, is just somebody who's been around for a long time and, and worked uh, in terms of historic preservation. Sometimes it's a work that's still in progress. Uh, several years ago, we did one in the Diamond District. Uh, the gentleman has been very slowly working mm -hmm. on his, pro it's, it's, Dr. It's, it's Bass. Dr. Bass, yeah. Nice yep. old house. One of our employees, mm -hmm. Dave Riley Jr., he was a recipient of that yep. award two years yep. ago. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yep. that was cool. Yeah. So, yeah. these, so these are the significance awards. Um, um, other, than, uh, other than what you've mentioned, any other notables? Um, we, we, well, the, uh, the traditional breads, I think we did just this year. Right. Yeah, that was a cool one. Yeah. Yeah. The guy came in, he took this old building. Right. And rehabbed it. And, and just so often people just, like the, 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 the smokestack. It's still there. We don't need it. No, blow it up. Boom. Yeah. Gone. Right. Uh, so he preserved it. He kept the outside of the building. It's and a it's nice little gorgeous. feature. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, 
it's like a it's a feature aspect to that building you know it's great for a little, little advertisement yeah. aspect of it i mean you know i went to ireland maybe three years ago okay and it's like you know here in america you're going to salem 16 this 14 that it's a pretty big deal you know we go over an island it's like year two yeah you know, you're like right. what this is crazy like and, and just going into like some of the distilleries it's a big thing over there um they've got all of that old stuff it's not functioning but it serves a purpose yeah. there it's an aesthetic you know i think that the the aesthetically pleasing aspect to history preservation is really one of the things that kind of keeps me gusted into it i'm really yeah. excited about learning more about it um and seeing it too salem some of the, some of the my favorite areas downtown salem even downtown lynn like city hall itself um, the building next to it the verizon building art deco building mm -hmm. it's really interesting that the architecture that exists just speaks gotham city to me you know like kind of like when i was a kid like back in the day my superheroes and those guys uh anyway i'm rambling um so those are your significance awards i want to talk about the walnut street uh, uh pump station so we had kind of alluded to this at the beginning and this is an example of a piece of uh, history that would have been really really good to do but you guys weren't able to, to actually pull it off. Let's talk about the, the process and in going into this building and then where it ended up falling off. Okay. This is the Wall Street Pumping Station is across from where the pumping station is now, across the street. It got turned into uh, multifamily housing. We were trying to convert that into condos. It was owned by the city of Lynn, and it was a very old building, very, very old. One of the first pumping stations in the city. It had a hole in the roof. They were willing to work on it and fix it, but uh, as time went on, they started working on it, and they discovered some um, stuff in the bay, asbestos, giant oil tank that leaked. There was some thorium, which is a radioactive element in the basement. By the time they got pumped all that stuff out and got everything ready to go, they had spent over $100,000 more than they had planned. Oh, man. At the same time, the housing market tanked so they wouldn't have been able to get as much for a condo as they had, been, had planned. As a result, they were simply unable to make financial sense of the project. So we worked with Mass Historical at an alternative. And the alternative was to create these two, uh, I believe they're three families, with the coins on the corners, and the tall in, sort of invokes the, the mass of the old structure and the coins, of course, represented what the building had originally. They even preserved what called the eyebrows on the second floor, these large concrete arches, and turned them into planters. Oh, so, wow, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's something. We worked hand in glove with the city and Mass Historical Sorry. to accomplish that. Yeah, it's like a little, I mean, if you, if you can't get everything out of it, get something out of it. Exactly. Um, are, are there any, we've got about three minutes left on the program. Are there any other, um, um, Continuous improvements. What can we expect to see from the Historic Commission? What's, what's next on the, uh, the line item, so to say? What, what's your next project that, that we can look forward to? Ideally, we would like to get the GAR established as a local historic district and get that extra 10%. There are always projects going on. Right. Uh, we've done multiple uh, grants with the, with the library. Uh, it's another project. Pat, what uh, do you think it's going to take so to get that done? I don't know. I wish I did know. <laughs> uh, yeah, the it, year will tell us. Yeah. yeah, we've been wondering about that for, as I say, I think about three months we've been trying to have that meeting to, to do it. Well, hopefully we got the maybe, right... Maybe uh, having this on TV right. and maybe they'll say, well, maybe now the public knows will... Yeah. Maybe it's of our interest to get it done, definitely yeah. without a doubt. Um, I'd, I'd love to say just thank you guys for doing what you're doing because, you know, I, I didn't know much of what was going on in 88. I was eight years old then. Oh, no, three years old. I'm <laughs> dating myself now. Um, so I was three years old then. I didn't know a lot was going on. But because of, like, the, your work, your dedication, I'm able to visit these buildings. I'm able to actually celebrate Lynn's history. And it's thanks to the hard work of people just like you guys. So um, really important to recognize you guys have been involved with the Historic Commission since the 80s. These guys are dedicated to history preservation in Lynn. Historic Commission meets on the first Tuesday of every month, 6.30 p.m. in room 402. Uh, you can go on to the city the Lynn website to find additional information. If you're interested in learning more about the organization, you can reach out 781-690-1307. I want to say thank you to my guests, Carl Greenler and Pat Lee, for coming on to the program. That's it for the Lynn Community Television Show. From the studio here at LCTV, I'm Sean Donahue, wishing you all the best. <laughs>